Hi, and I want to welcome you to this online presentation of Hold the Winning Hand, Tools and Tips to Help Manage Blackboard Learn Environments. I'm Terry Patterson, and I want to welcome you to, uh, again, welcome you to this uh, presentation today that I gave at Blackboard World 2014. So a little about me. I'm a Blackboard MVP. I'm a Catalyst Award winner. Uh, and my official title is the uh, LMS Application Administrator at the University of Missouri. Uh, while I am work do work for the University of Missouri, I'm still in, from Arkansas and still a Razorbacks fan. Uh, my family consists of two cats. As you can see, Lewis and Leo. Leo's the one there uh, rubbing his nose on my nose. Uh, and Lewis has the Mizzou uh, tag. And I am a big fan of technology. I like to play with things, try new stuff, really learn about what type of technology is out there and what's available. And while we're going through this presentation, I want to call attention to the lower left-hand corner. Uh, you can see a short URL, bbgu.ru forward slash bbw14. That's a link to all the information that we're going over in this, in this uh, presentation. So I want to recommend that you visit that site whenever possible. Uh, when you have information or you want to gain more information or more insight, there are going to be resources there. And quickly, I am also the uh, author of Blackboard Learn Administration. If you don't have a copy of the book, you can pick it up at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or Pack Publishing. It's available in digital and print formats. You can also feel free to follow me on social network, social uh, media. Uh, you can contact me through my website, blackboardguru.com. So, Blackboard World 2014 was set in Vegas. So I decided to use a Vegas-type theme to begin the conversation today. So imagine yourself playing a poker game. It can be for money or not. But in this game, you have three opponents. Those three opponents want to win, and of course, so do you. But for you to win, you must find their issues, their needs, and fulfill them. Fulfill their needs to bluff them out and win the game. Well, the three opponents that we have when we're looking from a perspective from a poker game, moving over into a different type of the game of, of managing your Blackboard Learn environment and dealing with that are uh, I basically create a kind of a X, uh, Y matrix here. There's yourself, there are the support staff and troubleshooters, and those folks, server management people, and of course our end users. I want to delve into their needs a little bit before we start talking about their tools. So we can really, you can see how I went through selecting the tools and things that I, I chose for this presentation. So the end users are the first people. They really just want the product to work. They're normally students, faculty and staff. They have multiple types of technology. They have many different ways they connect in the environment. Uh, to the to our Blackboard Learn environment, and they have a variety of uh, technical knowledge from still using the uh, CD-ROM as a tray for their drink, from the very technical people who have home networks and everything going on. Then you have the tier one and two tier two support staff and troubleshooters. They really just want the tools to do their job that can make things easier. They've got various levels of support experience. They hear user frustrations on a regular basis. They want to expedite and, and complete tasks so that they can get things off of their plate and move forward to something else. Server managers are a third uh, group in the, in, matri in the matrix. And that's a server, those folks, Worry about server status, the 99.99999% uptime. 
they worry about how the health of the server is from the physical hardware and the fans inside those boxes to the operating system to the database and even if you're using load balancers and routers and such like that they co they're concerned about networking and then let's not forget the blackboard administrator in this whole thing uh, blackboard admins really do own the application and want to make it work for just everybody all three of the people in the matrix and they manage the others issues they collect feedback on what these other three parties need and want and so that's an important aspect of this game as we're calling it so with those players now we understand their needs so we know that each one of them in the matrix they're going to have different things that will meet those needs different tools and different things and how can we as an admin or as we as uh, supporters of all these different groups be able to create things so I want to review with you some of the tools that I've used and are, and are currently using to meet the needs of these three other groups in the matrix and I'm wanting to compare at least two different tools in each group I'm going to explain what made us select one tool over the other and then I'll give a short demonstration of each tool okay what can web so now we're going to talk about it in users I jumped in there just a little quick but now we're going to talk about it in users what can web analytics do for you web analytics meets the need of users because it really web analytics lets us know what the end user is doing it may, helps us understand how their their connection it helps us understand what operating system they're using and and a whole lot of information that sometimes it's really hard when you're on a phone call or an email or something and you're trying to gather that gather that data from them and if you better understand your end users as a whole it helps you make things a little bit easier when you're trying to troubleshoot issues as well as finding users and the impact that a issue might have a great example would be uh, a few years maybe a year or two back uh, the Blackboard Learn application had issues with the new discussion board feature and Internet Explorer. Well, if you have web analytics, you can find out how many users really are going to be impacted by that versus how many users are not going to be impacted by that. Then, if you have a very small amount of users who are impacted by it, it might be willing to go ahead and implement this product or this change or this update, even though there is an issue as long as the issue is being worked on and trying to be addressed you may want to go ahead and implement something it's depending on your amount of risk that you have in your environment so web analytics basically boils down to two products that I looked at Google Analytics and a newcomer to the to the arena called Peewick at least a newcomer from my perspective uh, Google Analytics is a software as a service they have a lot of detailed data they work a lot with partnering with companies to find out location IP owners etc and they do have a free option available if you need it however data is stored on uncontrolled institutional servers and if you have a very conservative view of FERPA that could be a problem within your institution as well as if, uh, if there's some grand money or anything else going on so that you may have some issues there and Google has access to that data information for their data mining purposes it's a little bit of a tricky but you know free comes with some caveats but you do have the option to pay after well actually you don't have an option the free option only works for the first million hits per month we would go through those in the first week at the University of Missouri so it's important that we go ahead and maybe look at something else if you're going to have a large environment if you have a small environment very few users this probably won't be a problem so <clears throat> excuse me Peewick the positives on it is that it does keep the information locally or on a third-party company you can actually find where that server resides unlike with a Google where it's kind of in their cloud 
The information's open source, PWIC the product rather, but you can get a commercial installation and you can get support uh, from third-party companies who support PWIC. And of course, being open source, it's free. So, but there are some few negatives. Local resources are going to be required, whether it's through paying a third party or hosting it on your campus or institution site. And if you don't build your PWIC installation properly and give it enough uh, strength, your system could possibly have issues. Possibly performance, and I mean performance not in the Blackboard sense, but performance, uh, for example, we at the University of Missouri have it hosted on, have our uh, database, which is MySQL, hosted on a shared hosting service. So several different databases for many different uh, things, such as WordPress and stuff, are all there. Well, the PWIC system was putting so much taxing, was taxing the resources on that server so much that we've really had to move it off to its own separate server. And that was a, uh, a lesson that we learned about uh, the tax, how, how badly and how much... Uh, the product is utilized when you have, are using a very large institution and have a large usage of Blackboard in your environment. So we chose PWIC. We did so because of FERPA concerns. The cost was cheaper than looking at Google. It provided more detailed information and real-time data, and it really does find give us more information about the user within the Blackboard application, which is very helpful. Something I could never see in Google. And here is a demonstration of how PWIC works in your environment. Here's an example of how to use PWIC with Blackboard. You're now seeing the dashboard page. It is the initial page that you find when you log in to PWIC. You can see that there are multiple modules in the environment, and I'm going to highlight a few for you. First, there's the visits over time. Visits over time actually shows you a day-to-day -day breakdown over the past month of visitors to your site. This is great for us for planning and determining when we're going to uh, put in uh, for patching, maintenance windows, or doing upgrades. Here you can see we have a regular uh, pattern with our users. Monday is normally the highest day in the week. Saturday is normally the lowest. To the right of that is a real-time map. It's really all wonderful and it's a great tool to show the impact of our environment to management and director, le director levels. Each of these orange dots are real-time people from around the world that are accessing our environment. Most of these people right now are in the U.S., but during a continuous or when you're looking at different times during the day, you can see people from around the world. We can also find out how many people are using different types of browsers and what browsers are most, most used with our application. You can find here that today we're finding Chrome to be used more than Safari and then Firefox, Internet Explorer and other program products. This is really helpful for us because it lets us know what browsers need, do we need to make sure that we test when we're going through upgrades, adding new products or new integrations with Blackboard. We can also see real-time interactions within our environment. This shows us where the person's from, what they're using, their uh, OS, and we can even look at more profile information. We can also see what keywords are the users searching before they're coming to our site. Search engines. We can also see visits by server time. Refer websites and the like. Let me show an example here where we can look at a graph of visits at this at the 9 a.m. hour 
throughout a month. We can see unique actions, actions per visits, average time on website, and the like. Here we've, we've moved over to the visitors area. We can see an, evo an evolution over the period of our visits and unique visits. We can also see average visit duration, page views, downloads, outlinks, and maximum actions. Here in the submenu, you can see a visitor log. Here you can see the IP, the provider name, information about the user, their browser, their OS. It tells us they're a returning visitor, and it tells us what plugins were installed. And then we can see what actions the user did during their session within the application. We can also look at things like devices, operating system families, device brands, browser families, and device models. These can be very help helpful in us understanding how the user is interacting with our environment, what types of products they're using, and what type of browsers they're using as well. We can also look at engagements, how long, how many times a visitor came through our environment, along with visits based on our server and local times. We also can see a visitor map for today, showing you the unique visits from a variety of different countries. Regions within the U.S., continents, and even cities, and providers. Actions is a very interesting area, too. You can see different areas. So, for example, discussion board, the number of page views, the number of unique page views, the average time that a user spends on the page, and an average page generation time. This can be very helpful in you understanding how long pages take to load in the environment and if we're seeing larger times for certain different type, certain pages while others are very short. There's a quick view of what PWIC can bring to your Blackboard Learn environment. So now let's talk about log analysis. Those troubleshooters and first tier support folks really need the ability to analyze uh, what information is happening and try to find out stuff. So log analysis tools really can help because they make the logs searchable. Searchable logs are really important, especially if you're an admin or trying to find out that needle in a haystack kind of situation. And if you have like our institution, a large environment, you have multiple app servers. And each app server holds its each golden little chest of gold that you need to learn about and that you need to have access to. It also eases the ability to find data and issues among the noise. So many times Blackboard puts information into logs that's just nonsensical. It's because you don't have this license or you don't have this or you don't have that. So being able to have an analysis tool allows you to tag specific information that, that can help you define when you're trying, that helps you define the information you need when you're trying to ask, talk to a user or find an issue for a user. It can also help when auditing a process or a user issue. So if you need to address uh, why something somebody's homework got didn't get installed properly on Blackboard. You can simply use the auditing analysis tools to find out that information or address a user's issue. It's a big help when trying to learn the process of how a user navigated through the environment. So we had two log searching web applications that we reviewed. 
Greylog 2 and Cabana. Greylog 2 provided more developed was a much more developed product. Allows alerting based on data from the log monitoring. So you if something appears after a certain amount of time, you can have the system uh, email you or text alert you if there's any problems. You can also get community and premium support if you wish, but Greylog 2 is an open source product. However, it does require Logstash, which uh, and along with Logstash, which both products need, it also requires the Greylog server application and a Greylog web interface. So there are some middlemen between Logstash and the web interface. Uh, and it can be really difficult to navigate and learn. While I didn't spend very much time with Greylog 2, and I will uh, allow other people to comment on Greylog 2 if they wish, I found it difficult to figure out. So Kibana, it is built in as part of Logstash now. It, it does allow for the ability to tag log data. Greylog 2 does that, but I found that Kibana does it a little bit easier because it has multiple ways to parse and tag that log data. However, the negatives interface, while very simple, it can take some time to learn. It does uh, not have the ability to send out alerts and it's a young product. You were seeing changes in major revisions, drastic changes, that if you're already using the product, it can make it very difficult to move from one, one product to another. So we chose Cabana, and I wish I was sitting in that Cabana on the beach looking at that ocean. But we did because there, were inst inst there was institutional interest in the tool. Sorry for my tongue not being too put together today. But there is institutional interest in the tool. They would like to, the institution would like to look at monitoring all system logs on all servers. So Kibana is a good option. It was gave us the ability to figure out what information and what logs we read into the product. It did give us some simplistic parsing scripting language. We use what's called Grok and it provides live stream log data collection. So we can actually look at what information's uh, being written to the log on a regular basis. Here's an example of our Kibana environment in, or in motion. Now let's take a look at Kibana within the Blackboard environment. Um, so Kibana allows us to take multiple sets of logs from many different locations from many different app nodes take log stash which will then index them put them into a database type of frame and then Kibana the front end of log stash allows us to search those tools and we're able to uh, parse through that data so here is a demonstration of what we're using Kibana for in our Blackboard Learn environment so here you can see this is the home page for Kibana as it were. Uh, we have it password protected for our environment just for, uh, uh, for safety. You can see up here this is uh, allowing you different search results. So I can search something happens last 15 minutes, 60 minutes, 4 hours, all the way to all time. Um, or you can customize a time frame and you can use this to customize your time frame by setting time and date. Okay, here's your search query uh, search area, your search reset, and your number of search results. So for the past 15 minutes we've had 69,000 uh, writes to logs within our environment. These are some search result output options. Um, and then also here are fields available to search. So these are some uh, different uh, strings that we can search on. So this also graphs our, uh, the number of search results that we're getting. And then here, is the messages, here are the messages that we get from all the logs. We have quite a bit of our Blackboard environment being collected. So here's an example. I recently logged into the system, so I'm going to search for my paw print. And here you can see, 
here written to this was written to the uh, I logged in on our our ninth app server called BB app 9 and this is being collected through the BB authentication log text file so I can see how it's connecting to the environment I can see uh, what IP address uh, it's showing that there the source IP address I can also do a couple of other things on the back end uh, to just see different things I can see some user agent strings and things like that and also search an IP let's say for the past seven days So the system is now searching through, but it finds several different things here. And here you can see that uh, each of these are different types. Some of this is coming from Tomcat, from the BB Access log. Some comes from S Apache logs. Some are coming through, you know, a variety of different locations or or different areas uh, this information can come through so you can take a look at that stuff so let's say I want to see all the information coming off of this file I can simply sit, click on that source it's going to look at every thing that's connected to my IP and came through that source file so you can see all of that This really makes it very easy to investigate um, so let's say you can see here the graph. The graph shows a lot of activity right here at this point. So I can just highlight that area, highlight it again, and it gets me deeper and deeper zooming into my logs so I can clearly see what's going on. It's a really great tool for utilizing that. Uh, there is a lot of documentation on this. I wrote, I wrote a blog about it. You can find it on my website. Uh, but here's an example uh, that you can see about how to use uh, Kibana for your environment. For our server management team, application performance management tools can really help. They provide insights not only into the server, but it also helps the BB admin because it helps understand the Blackboard application. It helps understand how that application interacts with services that the server management team man deals with, whether it's the database, the OS level, Apache, what have you, or how it interacts with uh, networking tools such as load balancers and third-party applications. It allows us also to figure out and find problems and issues before they really become outages and hurt the rest of our environment and our end users. Here I have three different applications, but basically I've lumped them into two different groups. Zabbix is the first one I'll talk about. It's open source and also paid. You can an agent that you can find an agent within the application and it sits resides on each server. It can monitor a wide variety of technology. And Blackboard's actually custom built templates and agents to monitor the product. The negative parts of this application, this application can require major resources, and it lacks the detailed information that New Relic and App Dynamics can provide. And New Relic and App Dynamics, while they're different companies, they both s provide similar tools in with their application. They both have well. AppDynamics offers a hosted locally or a SaaS version, while New Relic only offers a SaaS. And they both offer light versions, or free 30-day versions, for free. It allows deeper monitoring of Blackboard. Each product can really give you some deep information about Java threads and counts that Zabbix can't. Both products have been tested and used with Blackboard. In fact, that was one of the topics that was discussed during Blackboard World 2014. 
about the new APMs that Blackboard was testing and utilizing. However, there are some negatives. First, cost. New Relic and AppDynamics both run their charges based on agents. If you have a lot of applications that of application servers, that means a lot of agents and that means a lot of cost. And your information, if you selected a SaaS environment, is sent to a hosted offsite center, data center, where that information is stored. If that could be an issue, you might want to mark that in. Currently, our institution uses the product Zabbix. It's the most IT supported infrastructure and within our division, and the application has been monitored using Zabbix for years. However, we're not going to say that Zabbix is the end-all be-all because it does lack some black bo box, lacks uh, the openness of some other products. It has a black box mentality here at the university. Sometimes it's unable to make all the Blackboard templates work, but we continue to try to figure that out. And it doesn't really provide enough of the data when you compare it to other APMs. So with that, let's show you what Zabbix looks like in real time. Hi, I want to show you around our Zabbix 2.0 instance that we use to interact with our Blackboard Learn environment and to monitor it. So as you can see, what we call our environment is CSG Blackboard. We've got about nine servers in our environment and uh, we use uh, Zabbix as a tool to monitor. So here you can see system status, host status, and, and issues. You can see we have a couple of free disk space issues since we've been archiving courses but in the web monitoring tool you can see all nine of our app servers which sit behind our load balancer are all okay so let me show you a little bit of the graphs and screens options that we have here so let me click over here here you can see our Apache busy workers which is something that we monitor in our environment uh, because we want to make sure that our Apache, we've had previous problems where our Apache Busy Workers has gotten a little bit out of control. So here you can see, looking over seven days of data. So if I want to look at a specific day, let's say this one looks a little odd, I can highlight, drag and drop, and the system takes a little bit of time, but it will go ahead and zoom into this area. I can also use this feature to zoom in by hour, by one hour, two hours, three hours, six, all the way up to a full month if I want to look at that. And then I can move back and forth by hour, by 12 hours, by a day, by a week or a month. So here we can see the interaction and you can see our, our busy workers are pretty busy. There's a lot of color in that, so we do have a... a kind of a, a legend here to show us that. It also shows us the last, the minimum, and the average along with max, which is very helpful for us to see anything. So we also have other uh, images where we can look at different graphs. So for example, we can look at our uh, Java thread count. So you can see our Java thread count for all the servers continuously staying at pretty high loads. I've got this set so it's updating all the time as now. This is over the past hour. So if I go back, let's say, seven days, you can see it's kind of flat. Let me jump up another 12 hours. And here we can see activity around the, from about six. 13 p.m. to 7:13 p.m. But again, you can we can clearly see this data, and again, the legend graph down here shows us our actual statistical data. We also have some screens that we set up, and screens put is basically like putting a bunch of graphs together. So, for example, we're using uh, a lot of the QDI canvas cache hit ratios to figure out a few things. So here we are looking at a day's access here. And really, the graph doesn't help so much as the numbers down here. We can see their canvas, our hit ratio, maxed out 100, it's average. 
it's there was uh, our last report is 99.99 percent and for me the biggest concern is uh, hits on disk okay so you can see right here at seven o'clock uh, last night we had quite a bit of spike we actually got up to a three here which means that was actually not being kept in memory it was actually having to be written to the disk and that's a concern uh, and it can make us look at the need for purchasing a you know or building a Redis server for our environment if we see more and more of these as we go along so this is one of our screens another screen is for other things like assessment cache you can see those assessment caches haven't been utilized this morning so let me look over the past day you can see there's a line there but not too terribly much of anything going on let's look at the last seven days here we can see different points where the graph we clearly see some high points but we're not seeing any hits to the disk everything's being kept in memory good thing to hear so you can build as many screens as you want I think we have a server health screen here so we can see uh, busy workers we can see load per core we can also see requests per second we can also see our splash page response time so how often is that we're looking at download speeds of the of the page you know how are we doing on any of those so it's really really fascinating stuff it's very helpful when you need it so here's our Tomcat screen we can see any busy threads any current threads request processing time all that stuff all that information can be collected as well so that's a quick tour around Zabbix, since hopefully you can uh, gives you a little indication of what's available to you and what can uh, happen and how much uh, how you can utilize that. So uh, anyway, hope this has been helpful for you. Now that you've seen Zabbix, let's show you a demonstration of how another the other one of the other APMs called New Relic can function in a Blackboard Learn environment and you can compare the two. Hi, so I want to go over how you can integrate Blackboard Learn uh, into New Relic and using New Relic. New Relic and Blackboard Learn pretty much play well. Uh, there are a few things that you have to do and I'm recommending you click on a link below to try uh, on a how-to to get that it was created by a uh, another Blackboard admin. So I've done all the basic the back-end stuff to make our Blackboard environment uh, a, actually a, a load testing environment work with Blackboard Learn. So I want to show you a little bit about that. So right now we're in the middle of a new Relic dashboard and here you can see Blackboard Learn uh, is sitting here and you can see that it's an app server so the app server is responding in 3.82 milliseconds so it's responding back to the agent when it talks to this uh, new relic server which is uh, actually a hosted server so it's not sitting locally within my application okay you can see over here recent events where we've had some errors and where the uh, App index score has gone over a specific amount, so uh, these are also triggered into uh, that come in to my email. So let me go in a little bit. So you click here, and you can see that all nine of my servers are running. I actually have multiple, multiple JVMs here, so you can see I have a lot of them, and you can see that it's monitoring Java within the OS. Uh, here, because Colby B App 1 is not only running Tomcat for application, but also runs collaboration tools. So you can see the 8011, 8009 is running here. Your 2, 3, 4, all of these are running in that manner. So here you can see, we can take a look at the App, App Index score. I can actually go back 
if I want to change that I can say let me look at the past 24 hours I can set it to a custom date uh, I can change my time frame I can set it to a specific uh, time frame as well so it's really pretty pretty helpful here so here uh, you can see this is actually monitoring the JVM transaction response time and also my database. That's something that well, if you looked at the Zabbix 2 demonstration I, ju I did, it doesn't monitor that Zabbix and the uh, database integrations. And that's an important aspect. So uh, let me click over here to the map and you can see again how our database interactions are happening. We can see call count, standard deviation, min, max, all that. We can also see transactions and the like. We can look at what's the most time consuming web transactions on from the web. We can also look within Java. What's taking the slowest amount of time as well. And we can see how things are faring with indifference. And as you can see, we can look all the way down into uh, a specific bean uh, in there. We can also look at what's what other loads are being put on the server uh, that are not involving the web transactions. So we can see how much memory each event is using. Then we switch over to the database. And here we can see what's being the, what's the most time consuming database operation that's having to go on. Uh, which is great because if Blackboard's running a very long time consuming database call, here we can see that really quick, really easily, and find that information. Slowest response time, throughput, slowest queries by web transaction, a lot of different options there. You see the database throughput and the database response time. Also, external services. So if it's so Blackboard reaching out to different tools, different things, uh, such as if you're using any of the third-party building blocks, it may be reaching out to. Those are options there. JVMs. We can look at the t the different JVMs. So I'm going to click on here which is an 8009. I can see my heap memory, my party, a lot of my memory information right here. I can also look at threads. And I can look at session counts. Of course this is a server that's only being load tested so you're not going to see any activity on it right now. But we have found that this has been very helpful as we've been monitoring uh, that activity. And I've switched over to events here. You can see the error rate, errors per request. If we're seeing different errors, we can look for URLs if things have happened. We can even cause alerts to happen. So here's one unable to ping safeassign.blackboard.com. We could cause that to happen and it sends us alerts how we're deployed, some a thread profiler that we can do as well. And this is helpful. We can look at SLA, availability, web transaction, scalability, database, and background jobs. So really unique tool. I highly recommend if you have the chance uh, to install this on a test environment and give it a try. It's it's pretty interesting. So so we've looked at those four different those four groups ourselves the server management team, the support staff and troubleshooters, and the end users. So what have we really learned from playing the game at the University of Missouri? Here are some tips that I think will help you. Look for weaknesses in your monitoring and user data collection. If you don't have any of these products or tools enabled, or you haven't really thought about where you want to begin, that's a great place to start. What's most important for you right now? And what information do you really need to find? Remember when talking about these free products and comparing them to a paid product, 
Remember the term free like a puppy. You still have to spend resources, hours, and uh, training time all to learn how to manage a quote-unquote free product. The amount of time and effort that you're going to put into this product, into this work, is it really worth the effort? Will the data really help? And will it really help speed up support and issue resolution? Think about those questions before you start planning how to implement one of these tools or reevaluating your current tools. And while we've learned a lot, we've also learned where things can be changed and how it can be improved. First of all, Blackboard really needs to come out and recommend some options. APM products, while can be used widely, but it's helpful when the manufacturer or software developer actually recommends a few options. There needs to be a solution that can do all three. In-depth to the APM, in-depth into the logs, giving searchability, and also monitoring in users. I haven't found the tools that Blackboard currently has to be a good option for any of these and go deep in, in depth in there. There needs to really be some more community interest and in development of how you can plug in these products and how to work with these products. Instructional guides, uh, templates, things like that are great help. And there needs to be discussion on how to implement some of these tools and what these tools do within the application itself. It's very difficult when you can't search logs within the application. That's a frustration that we would hope developers from Blackboard take away and begin to work on. So with that, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for listening and uh, viewing this presentation. You can contact me at any of these you social media options available. There's my email address as well as my Gmail and remember my website blackboardguru.com. Thanks. Have a great day.